My man Teddy Cakes at. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday when he puts out a new issue, along with updates throughout the week when warranted. You come on over to the newsletter tab at TFNN, click that subscribe button. It's $97 a month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can sign up for it while you listen to our man Teddy Kegstad, and you gain access to the archive of the webinar Teddy just did last Wednesday. Uh, and boy, we got some currency action this morning, to put it lightly. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, where do you want to kick things off, man? We're in some earnings season, but boy, dollar index. I was jumping around to some of the pairings, getting ready to talk to you this morning, and pretty interesting uh, when you put them a little longer term, just the divergences you've been talking about in terms of where those pairs are <laughs> versus just the dollar index. Uh, where do you want to kick things off this morning, Teddy? Uh, well, we have to start with the Japanese yen. Tomorrow we have a rate decision, and finally there's going to be a rate hike. So um, we have the new leadership at the uh, BOJ, and uh, we've been waiting. We've been talking about this literally for half a year, you know, as they were transitioning and where they're going to finally do something because they haven't done anything for, you know, ever. <laughs> so um, now, is it a big deal? Not really. I think the market's already got it priced in. So I think that's one of the reasons why you are seeing a little bit of a, a bearish tone on the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen today. Um, one thing you have to really pay attention to the dollar index today is that you know it's the euro that's driving this the euro is making new highs today it just recently broke out to the upside this morning and uh, this is this is something that I think is a head fake rally you have to look at the other currencies as far as most of the bat the, the major pairs that are not as strong as say the euro and the pound and what have you uh, they're actually down you know so or flat so um, that's something that you have to really uh, you know pay attention to you know, um, the British pound uh, is, is something that also is, you know, right now they're not making new highs, even though they're higher on the day. We have a head and shoulders pattern forming. You know, you also have the same thing uh, with we have a rate decision coming up next week as well. We have a hike that we know is going to come most likely a quarter point. So and uh, the bonds, they're rallying. The 10 years are rallying right now. Also, all the interest rates, the yields are pulling back. You know, because the you know the consensus is is that the Fed is going to be done after uh, the meeting next week, and I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I was walking through the charts as you were talking about them. Pretty interesting moves. You mentioned the euro pushing highs. Uh, I pull up the dollar index yesterday, man. We almost pushed 102 on that acceleration we just got. You basically just almost hit 101. But as you mentioned, pretty interesting that we have higher price in bonds, lower yield. Uh, I was looking at even the 10-year. I know you love the 30-year as well, but that trend, mm -hmm. I mean, there was no movement like we saw in the dollar index. Yes, we had some volatility yesterday, but nothing like what we saw in the dollar index in terms of we, it seems like yields just continuing to drop here. How do you make sense of that, Teddy, with the Fed? Because I agree with a lot of what you say, and right now we're seeing those numbers continue. It looks like higher price, lower yield, uh, like you mentioned, as we come into a Fed hike probably a week from today. Okay, well, that's actually something that I can, I do have a theory on. Uh, Let's first hear of all, the market, the market, the market is always correct. You know, I'm sure to, you, you would hear on certain other places that uh, the market's getting it wrong right now. Uh, no, the market's getting it right because the market pricing is coming because we have a banking crisis. You have all the central banks that are providing the liquidity and they're buying up these assets because remember they are. We don't get do-overs in the regular business world. The banks are getting a do-over. They made incredibly, horribly stupid decisions buying treasury, the treasuries, literally a year ago. So now the Fed is buying them back at those prices, meaning they get a complete do-over. It's a reset. So if they're buying assets at a, at a, at a discount, they have to unload them eventually. So right now, that's why they have a coalition of all the central banks are pumping up our debt market right now because they have to dump them. And guess what? Yields pricing will have to go lower. Even if the Fed was to stop raising raising rates, we're at a price point that's it's it's out of it's out of whack. Markets always correct. Okay. So and that's something that I think we're seeing right now. If you look at the thir the thirty year and the ten year, you have head and shoulders patterns forming. Just like you have in the British pound, the euro is breaking out to the upside. Next week we have our fe our Fed meeting. If we don't take out highs, if the dollar doesn't get crushed, and if yields don't keep on going down, well, 
they're going to snap back the other way, which means we'll have a violent move to the downside in yields, meaning going higher going into next week. Then what would that do for the dollar? That would be very bullish for the dollar versus currencies like, for instance, the pound, you know, the yen, because <clears throat> their rate decision will be over. And guess what? They're raising a quarter point tomorrow. And then what are they going to do? Nothing. <laughs> so, so if that means that in the, in the course of less than a week, we're going to negate their their hike just in our with our central bank alone, you know. Yeah. So, and I think that's what you're seeing right now is this really tug of war going on. And the reality is, I don't care if you're the Federal Reserve, the BOJ, the BOE, or whatever. No man, no woman, no one entity can control a market, and that's what they're trying to do. And the markets will always teach you that that ain't working. Yeah, I mean, the banking deal is pretty intense, man. First Republic, those numbers that they put out in their earnings, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a, a, an accountant to understand that I don't understand how those numbers work going forward when everybody just wants their money back, rightfully so. I mean, who's who's choosing to do business with a bank like that? And that's just the tip of the banks. And, and like you said, some of those decisions, again, you don't have to be a genius, folks. They locked in, you know, their businesses, they take in deposits, right? And then they loan it out and make more money on the loan that they put out than what they're giving people for the deposit. And they took all that money and locked it in long term at like one and a half percent ballparking. But, you know, that's right. trouble for sure. Uh, what do you think about crude? We got lower prices than <laughs> crude. Again, at $76, down about a dollar right now on my on my chart for light sweet crude. What do you think of that action? We've kind of filled that entire gap from the OPEC plus cut. You you got the you said the word right there the gap and the Tiger Forex report readers know that I was saying you know the old trader adage is all gaps get filled we've been talking about that you know since they broke out to the upside a couple of weeks ago and that's what they're doing they're filling the gap I think it's going to stabilize for a little bit um, overall I'm bullish crude. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think the, the gap needs to be filled. And then after that, we'll see a little consolidation and then just get we're waiting for the next the news event, if you will, whatever. I'm sure something will come out from OPEC or somewhere around the world about that. And it'll cause a spike in oil again. I don't see us going into summertime with crude oil prices going down, especially as demand is going to be higher. Yeah, especially when you know you got OPEC plus that. Is, is an active player, to put it at least, with some type of sand in, in the ground, and, um, line in the sand, in terms of where they're comfortable with that price. Teddy, real quick, we got about a minute left. Could you let everybody know, because I was listening to that webinar you did last week, it was a week ago today, and you did just a tremendous job walking through the pairings and what you were looking at. Can you let people know when they sign up the archive what you talked about last week that they gain access to? Sure. Thank you about that, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, we talked about the central banks, <clears throat> what's moving forward, how they're uh, interacting with each other and the, uh, the outlook of how they're going to behave over the next uh, three to six months. And also a lot of the divergence in the currencies. You know, we've been talking about this for six months, and it's really becoming not just relevant on a daily basis like today where you can see it, um, but it, just moving forward. We have uh, the whole world is splitting apart. We have uh, uh, we're on this side and you're on that side kind of thing happening. And most people, you know, we, we look in the United States like, you know, there's King Dollar and our markets are the real thing. But there's markets all around the world and they're starting to take a lot of strength away from us. I just thought it was great how you went kind of market by market and broke down the influences on each currency pair. Check it out, folks, under the thanks, newsletter Tommy. tab. Teddy, thanks so much, man. We'll talk to you next week, okay? Sounds good. Okay, stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be